Good afternoon, everyone. Bon après-midi à tous. Euh, ça a l'air que j'avais un petit problème de... pour mon live feed, mais ça a l'air que maintenant le streaming est revenu. Euh, bon bon après-midi à tous. Uh, good afternoon to all. Welcome. We'll just see who's, uh, who's in the uh, channel right now, real quick. And uh, in the process, I will also... Uh, I'm going to have to turn off my messaging because for some reason it's ringing uh, galore here. Uh, very good. Everything works out there. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, today, uh, Saturday, the 25th of April uh, 2020, uh, today we'll be talking about our next uh, photo project. Uh, or challenge, or, or photography challenge, which is um, low light and uh, low, sorry, low light. What am I saying? Low key. We're going to be talking about low key today for our next um, our next uh, weekly challenge. So, aujourd'hui, on va parler de notre prochain, uh, prochain, notre prochain uh, défi hebdomadaire uh, qui était. Uh, par le sondage qu'on avait fait il y a une semaine. Euh, oubliez pas, le sondage est encore ouvert avec des nouveaux défis, avec des nouveaux sujets, euh, s'il vous plaît. Ou si j'oublie à chaque fois de, de mentionner, euh, si vous avez, euh, euh, bienvenue, euh, Madame Bonhomme, euh, Marc, euh, bonjour, bonjour, bon après-midi à tous. Euh, N'oubliez pas que, et puis j'oublie toujours de, 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 de le dire, mais euh, si vous êtes... Euh, branché en travers de mon YouTube, euh, s'il vous plaît, n'hésitez pas euh, à la fin euh, ou pendant, peu importe, de soit cliquer sur like ou si vous le, si pour une raison ou une autre, euh, l'épisode la, la, que, que j'ai euh, planifié, vous n'étiez pas d'accord avec ou quoi que ce soit. Euh, mais quand même, euh, s'il vous plaît, abonnez euh, au poste. Euh, C'est la seule façon que je peux voir combien de personnes sont intéressées euh, dans, mes, euh, dans mes chaînes. Je suis en train aussi de travailler sur des euh, épisodes préenregistrés, euh, autant que pour des... Euh, je suis en train de regarder, voir comment je pourrais aussi intégrer un podcast euh, un peu plus personnalisé, je t'avoue, mais quand même qu'il serait quelque chose aussi intéressant. Euh, durant ce cette, euh, cette temps de, de, de quarantaine. Uh, quarantaine. Um, so, I'm just, sorry, uh, just to, to reiterate here, uh, welcome to Corinne, uh, welcome to Mark, uh, to the channel today. Uh, I always, I, I, I've been doing this now for three weeks and I, and I constantly forget to ask everybody, please, if you get a chance, Uh, before you, you after at the end of the conf, uh, at the end of the conference or, or 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 during the conference, if you're if you're all subscribed to the channel, uh, please uh, like or dislike if 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 you know if the case may be. Uh, give me comments. Uh, you can comment uh, in the actual descriptions of each episode, but please leave leave me some kind of a feedback because that's that's how um, it's going to drive uh, where these episodes go and as far as. Uh, subject matter and, and, and material. Um, you know, I mean, I'm doing this as much for myself. I'm doing this also for each of you uh, so that we can, you know, get through this, these, these trying times uh, and still keep our, keep our um, you know, ingenuity and, and, and uh, creativity uh, fueled. Um, so if you get a chance, please, please like, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed uh, and uh, we'll, we'll um, you know, see where this all goes in the next uh, few months. Um, so just to say, today we're going to be talking about uh, Loki uh, because our, our, uh, our um, challenge, our weekly challenge this week is Loki photography. And for those of you who aren't aware or, or don't, never heard of the term Loki, Uh, low key in itself is, um, I'm just going to make a quick, quick adjustment here. Give me one second. And what I want is this control V, something like this. And here we go. Bon, parfait. So, uh, what I'm looking for here is basically, uh, so low key uh, is a style of lighting uh, for photography. 
film or television. Uh, okay, it's a necessary element in creating a uh, chiaroscuro effect. Um, you know, uh, tr traditional photographic lighting is usually three-point lighting. So normally you'll have a key light. So you'll have the light that 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 is based, or I should say, the light in which your exposure is based on. That's your key light. That's the, the, the principal light that's lighting your subject. After that, you'll have usually a fill light, which will reduce shadows um, on your subject uh, in consequence of your, your exactly your fill light. And then typically you'll either have a hair light or a back uh, backdrop light, um, which will either uh, separate the subject lighting the back of the of the of the subject to separate them from the background or um, to go and create a uh, what we would call a contre jour which is just a little 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 fill of light uh, behind the subject or you would also or you could also use it as a background light in which that third light would be just illuminating the background and that we can that we can talk more about when we when we talk about high high key lighting later on uh, as the episodes uh, progress. C'est-à-dire que normalement avec l'éclairage quand on parle d'éclairage en tant que tel euh, en photographie on traditionnellement on parle de de d'avoir trois trois lumières en tant que tel ça serait la lumière principale qui est de, de où vient euh, l'exposition euh, générique ou général de mon, mon, ma, ma composition en tant que telle. Fait que la lumière principale ou la lumière clé, c'est de où se comprend notre exposition sur le sujet. Par après, vous pourriez avoir deux autres lumières. Vous pouvez avoir en tant que tel en studio, vous pouvez avoir autant de lumières que vous voulez, mais normalement, à trois, à, à trois lumières, euh, vous allez avoir la lumière clé. Vous allez voir la lumière de remplissage, qui est une lumière qui est normalement en 45 degrés, euh, ou 90 degrés dépendant euh, comment est-ce que je veux éclairer mon sujet, mais c'est un éclairage qui est euh, combine, combine, comblin, com, combine la lumière principale euh, du sujet pour adoucir les ombrages créés par la lumière clé. Et par après, vous pourriez avoir soit une troisième lumière qui ferait la lumière, l'éclairage pour le fond, ou un éclairage euh, de qu'est-ce qu'on appelle, ce serait plutôt une euh, lumière de découpage ou euh, si on prend la, la traduction euh, voyons, la traduction euh, réelle en anglais, ça serait la, la, la lumière de, euh, de, 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 de le, le, pour couper les cheveux pour couper les cheveux, excusez la lumière de cheveux ou ce que ça va éclairer le, le, le dos du sujet euh, pour réussir un découpage euh, du sujet de son fond ou juste par hasard pour éclaircir le fond en tant que tel, parce qu'on on aurait besoin, pour une raison ou une autre, une lumière qui est beaucoup plus puissante que qu ce qui est sur le sujet en tant que tel, c'est-à-dire si on veut faire un high key. Euh, puis ça, on va parler plus tard dans les, euh, dans les éclairages, euh, dans, dans les épisodes euh, qui suivent. So, in low key lighting, typically, uh, what, we're, what we're doing in, in low key photography is, 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 is using one sole light, a single light, um, but principally what we're doing is we're only lighting the subject themselves in which the background and typically the foreground too, depending on how the subject is or, or where the subject is situated or how we set up the subject, uh, typically where we will have a background that is pure black. And to give you an example of a perfect, and in this particular case, uh, I'm going to go, you know what, I'm going to go with this, this image right here. I'm going to show you in just a moment. Um, so basically the image that I'm looking um, that I'm talking about right now is this image right here. So if we look at this image, you'll notice that there is one light. And if we look at the reflection, that light is coming from the foreground, uh, which is typically over the photographer. So over the camera and pro at a 45 degree angle, but it is only solely lighting the subject. Okay. Uh, and typically, in this particular case, the exposure here is actually coming from this particular zone here, okay? And that's that's how you want to, uh, I mean, you know, we have, and I can't find mine right now because I've got too much crap on, yeah, no, I found it, here it is. 
typically you can use what we call a light meter if i can just without making everything else fall here but a light meter basically is this little doohickey that you see right here and there's all kinds of models and all kinds of types and typically because this one is is, is a much earlier version of it um, typically what i would do here is i would put a ring around that dome and you get other models um, i can show you models later on when we're talking about gear which will recess the dome into the casing and will only take the reading of that light that's directly uh, that that that's angled directly at the sensor which is right here in this particular case this one reads and if you look at the back over and the back on the wall here you've got one glare there and you've got one glare there because i actually have two lights lighting me okay and actually this light here is 20 percent lower than the light on that side which is why you see the mage has less of a glare on him than this glare which is being uh reflected from the light on my left your right okay uh so if i want if i want to get a specific reading from a particular light that's where we would use a light meter here okay and this goes for flash this goes for um, uh, natural lighting uh, continuous lighting this is what you would use if you want that otherwise you can actually just go with you know i'm hey, listen it works you know i mean uh in, in this particular uh image here that we see here you'll see that the glare coming from here is telling me the direction where the light is and the fact that this one here is slightly over this this glare here is slightly overexposed i'm i'm seeing that mostly the the actual exposure is being taken off of this part of the apple here si vous regardez ici vous voyez que l'éclat de la lumière qui est ici m'indique de où vient la lumière premièrement et deuxièmement on voit que quand même qu'il y a un tantinet de de, de, de de détail dans cet éclat éclatement là de l'éclairage on voit très bien que l'exposition est prise pas je te dirais plus dans cette coin là ou dans cette coin là euh, où ce que le photographe a choisi faire son euh, son exposition si on regarde un autre exemple dans ce cas ici euh, non, non, on va prendre genre, euh, je veux un portrait. Ah, tiens, on va prendre la, 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 la tête du squelette. OK. So, well, OK, it's not a big picture. Hold on, let's get a bigger picture. Give me a quick sec here. Ah, here, you know what? Let's take this portrait right here. That'll do. Beautiful portrait here, as you can see. OK. And when you when you look at this image here you can you can see that um i mean the 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 the, the pose is, is profile is a profile of, of this particular model but when you look at the lighting the lighting itself what we're doing is we're basing our exposure really on i would say this part here of her forehead the exposure i'm not talking about the 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 the, the, the don't forget i'm not talking about the focus here i'm talking about the lighting so typically here and this is this is one one uh instant where yes i would probably if i was if i didn't have my uh light meter where i could actually meter the the light on the subject itself the uh, the, the subject uh, itself then what i would do is put my camera on spot meter and take the reading off of her forehead over here because if if it, or even off of her cheek if if i wanted to be able to um get that that medium gray from her cheek i would take the exposure right here on her cheek this has got nothing to do with the focus because if you look the focus is always on the eyes in portrait it's hyper 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 important that the eyes be crisp c'est hyper 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 important de pas mélanger votre mise au point avec votre exposition oui vous avez certains certains cas où ce que Si vous pesez sur le AEL, the auto exposure lock button on your cameras, typically what will happen is, usually by default, that button is programmed center spotted and wherever your focus point is. Okay, so it'll take the reading from where your focus point is when you're using selective, uh, selective point focusing with the spot metering. Now, typically, um, in this particular case here, we're taking more this part of her cheek as the exposure, but the uh, focus point is always, always on the eyes, okay? 
and you know for those of you who want to start you know getting into photo uh, basically photo photo uh, contests and stuff like that that's what makes or breaks an image whether your focus point is properly chosen and properly um, represented uh, so in portrait it's hyper um, important that you you absolutely get that 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 focus point le, le, le point de mise au point qui soit toujours le foyer soit toujours sur, sur les yeux quand c'est des portraits animaliers peu importe dès qu'il y a des yeux on, on, on cherche toujours d'y aller d'y aller euh, regarder les yeux avant tout autre now the fact that this is a low key is the, is the simple fact that she has one ray of light on her which is coming from oh i just lost my here we go Oh, uh, just want to make sure I'm not losing. I haven't lost anybody yet. Excellent connection. Fantastic. I love it. Uh, je vais juste vérifier que mon Internet est encore assez uh, puissant pour tout ça. Fait que si on regarde ici, um, l'effet du, du low-key en tant que tel, c'est l'effet que tout la photo en tant que tel, vous voyez comment est-ce que c'est tout noir Ça crée un, 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 un éclairage. Ça crée un. un, un Ouais, je dirais pas un effet, mais un, un, une ambiance dramatique euh, pour cette euh, photo-là. Euh, et puis, en, 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 l'autre chose aussi, c'est que vous voyez comment... C'est un, un photo noir et blanc à, à, you know, euh, qui, qui apporte encore plus à l'effet du low-key euh, en tant que tel. Et puis, euh, on peut regarder exactement qu'est-ce que ça donnera, qu'est-ce que ça donnerait euh, en couleur. Mais on parle d'à peu près la même chose. Ben, regardez ici, parfait exemple. Euh, si on regarde cette photo-là, attends. Ça s'en vient, j'espère. À moins que c'est vraiment loin. Voyons. There we go. Regardez la photo ici. Euh, c'est une un très belle photo couleur. On voit quand même que, non, c'est probablement la résolution de la photo en tant que telle, mais la mise au point est réellement fait sur le cœur du fleur. Euh, mais l'exposition en tant que telle, elle est prise plutôt soit sur le cœur ou sur la, la, la partie, juste un tantinet gris du blanc des pétales. Et puis que le fond en tant que tel, il est vraiment noir. Et c'est ça qu'on cherche dans un low-key, que le, 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 le fond du, euh, du, euh, du, de la photo soit réellement noir, complètement. Et que le blanc... Il faut toujours que le blanc soit toujours blanc, il faut toujours que le noir soit noir. C'est réellement comment est-ce qu'on on, on, on positionne euh, nos lumières qui fait que... Puis, tu sais, vous n'avez pas besoin nécessairement d'avoir un genre de... Tu sais, un, un lumière va faire, un flash va faire, un, un, même un flashlight si, si vous utilisez la lumière continue. Mais il faut absolument que la lumière ne touche pas le fond. OK? Fait, fait que typiquement, euh, quand on, on, on joue avec des fonds qui sont assez proches on va mettre la lumière plutôt en 45 degrés qui vont, qui vont venir, euh, or qui vont, je veux dire, euh, que la lumière va être dirigée en angle du sujet et le photographe. Euh, pour pas que la lumière en tant que telle touche le fond noir, sinon, qu'est-ce qu'on va faire? C'est qu'on va utiliser quand même une un puissance d'éclairage où ce que l'éclairage ne va pas nécessairement englober le sujet et d'y aller chercher le fond en tant que tel. Uh, what, I was, what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, typically, uh, to be able to do a, or to render a, a good low-key image, the light itself has to be uh, contained on the subject and nowhere else. So you don't want to go and uh, light up your background. So typically, a lot of times what happens is um, the, the flash or the, 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 the light itself If the subject is too close to the background, then the lighting ha the lighting has to be off to the side, because off to the side I have less chance of actually lighting my background. Others, uh, other I mean, there's other accessories that you can use. You can use basically a um, cardboard or a uh, paper that's been um, you know turned into a, a column where you're directing the light really more forward and less at an angle which it'll be which in in in, in uh, typically what you be, end up getting is a lot of bleed uh, bleeding light onto your surrounding environment i actually have to show you an example of what i'm saying give me a second here 
let me find my I'm just gonna find my um, my image but here's a perfect perfect image here uh, we're gonna do this one go back I wish I could do these in hold on just a sec so typically what we're looking at is that one and I want another one here which is going to be this one here so the view this image I go back uh, not what I want to do is what do I want to do here uh, ah you know what we'll do it that way it'll be easier that way yeah so typically what we're doing what we're what we're looking for in a low key image when we talk about lighting what we're going to do is we're going to to get this effect basically uh, and you'll see that i mean where the subject is doesn't really have um, any consequence on the photo itself because it's the lighting that that allows me to uh, black out everything that's around the subject and if you look at this the original image here well the original image but the, the setup of this image is basically this this is the setup here so you know you have the door behind the subject you have the uh, the wall the corridor you have the opening to the next room um, but notice how, how the face here is so completely inundated with light that in this particular case, we would do the exposure here on the cheek or over, over here on the forehead. And what it gives us is literally, it gives us a perfect exposure for the face, for the, for his, his chest, for his torso, but it blocks completely out everything that is surrounding the subject in his environment. And the reason for that is because we are controlling this lighting so precisely on what's been overexposed. OK? C'est-à-dire que si, si vous regardez cette photo-là, on voit très bien que le peau ici sur son joue, c'est assez bien éclairci. Um, tu sais, dans le cas ici où ce que j'aurais voulu avoir un peu plus de lumière à l'entour des yeux puis avoir moins des yeux raton laveur, mais dans ce temps-là, qu'est-ce que j'aurais fait, c'est que j'aurais baissé la lumière encore un petit peu plus, peut-être 3 ou 4 pouces, juste pour éclaircir un peu, pour, pour soulever les, les, les ombrages en dessous des yeux, l'ombrage, le, le, ou qu'est-ce qu'on appelle l'ombrage papillon, parce que ça, c'est justement un exemple d'un éclairage qu'on parle en studio, euh, qui est un éclairage papillon. So here, if you'll notice also, by the way, the lighting here is a perfect example of butterfly lighting which was a lighting that was used in, in cinema in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. Actually, it was more in the 40s and 50s. But just to say that uh, if I wanted to open up the eyes a bit and have less of these raccoon eyes, all you'd have to do at this point is, is literally keep the, keep the light at the same distance, just lower it a bit so that it, the, the light itself would fill up a little bit more uh, those eyes. Mais c'est pour dire que, qu est -ce que qu est, comment est-ce qu'on a réussi cette photo-là? C'est justement l'effet qu'on a, on a pris la, 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 la lumière en tant que telle, qui était, euh, on l'a mis assez proche, assez forte, pour surexposer le, la face. Mais en, tant, en temps réel, qu'est-ce qu'on a fait? C'est qu'on a réellement... Euh, oups! Non, il ne veut pas. Fait on va faire ça comme ça. Vous allez voir que nous avons fait euh, l'exposition ici sur son joue pour être capable d'abaisser tout cet éclairage-là qui a réussi à avoir un fond qui est totalement noir, qu'on n'a même pas pu aller chercher, on n'a même pas euh, eu la, la chance, ou euh, je veux dire, c'est sûr et certain, c'est pas le cadrage de la photo en tant que tel, mais on voit très bien qu'on ne voit aucun détail en arrière de notre sujet. Voici la photo, et justement, on va la grandir un petit peu plus. Puis vous voyez comment est-ce que ici, c'est vraiment, euh, d'après moi, c'est là où que on a pris l'exposition, c'est vraiment ici. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, send them down on the chat, on the live chat that we have here. Oh, that's what I forgot to light up. Let's bring up the live chat. Perfect. I just want to see here. Fantastic. Thank you for whoever liked. I didn't get to see who liked, but I, I appreciate the like that's there. Um, fantastic. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so now, uh, as much as we do use uh, high, uh, low key, sorry, low key for portrait photography, we can use low key for any number. I mean, any 
Um, well, where did I have it? I had it here before. Uh, where are they? No, not this one. Come on, where is it? Oh, I know what happened. It's in here. No. Oh, I just lost it. Bear with me a moment so I can find myself, but it's over. Okay, so here's an example. I, I, I forgot that I put this up. But here's a perfect example of lighting uh, for the subject. Um, notice the distance from the subject to the background. And the background in this particular case here, to make it easier for us, we use the black background. But typically, it's just the distance uh, between the subject and, and, and the background and how we've placed that key light. So in this particular case here, we've placed the key light on a 45 degree uh, angle from the subject and the camera and we've used a reflector behind just to light up the the just to give that little fill light uh, I should say not even a fill light this is not even being used as a fill light it's being used as a well um, uh, um, a hair light to separate the subject from that black background that we're creating because the lighting from here is only touching the subject and not touching the background in itself Okay, so this is your basic setup when you're talking about uh, setting up a, a low-key uh, image uh, in in studio using uh, either flash or using um, voyant, voyant, uh, in, uh, continuous lighting. Uh, this is what I'm looking for here. No, there. <sighs> sorry guys, I, I've got lost in my, and I know why I got lost in it because typically. This one, no, not this one, this one. Where is it? No. Okay, we'll do it this way. It'll be much easier here. Go with the images. Okay, so here we have another example of here's a here's a here's another example of a low key of a low key image too. Look at look at the way we've we've photographed this dog. So the dog in, the dog himself is black, obviously. The background is black. Uh, again, from the catch light in his eye, we can see that the um, key light is directly above the camera that's shooting the dog. Okay. Now here, what we've done is we've based our exposure. In this particular case, there's no real gray here we've underexposed the image to be able to recuperate as much of the glare that's on his on the tip of his nose as possible but in the at the same time we've co completely erased the dog's neck his un the under part of his chin okay uh wait now here we'll do it like this so you know you have to be careful and it, i mean this is a perfect um example of this particular uh, image here the dog is still uh well um, defined from the black background behind it's a black dog so you know the dog himself has to be black actually you know what your best light reading here would have probably been literally on the white of his eyes here okay and then just overexposed by one stop for this particular image okay if we look at another one here the cat whoops we have a look at the cat okay in this particular case you know the light instead we put the light behind the subject okay and we've actually taken the exposure off of probably this part of his forehead or his head his ear to be able to recuperate this and not so much off of the white under his chin okay um, and you'll notice that you've still, you know, with the light where it's positioned, it, it cuts the subject very well. It makes for a very dark, very dramatic image, yes. Uh, si vous regardez ici, c'est une façon de faire l'éclairage, c'est-à-dire que au lieu d'éclairer vers le sujet uh, pour empêcher, peut-être que justement, cette, le, 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 la raison pourquoi il a été éclairci, éclairci comme ça, c'est réellement parce que le chat en tant que tel, il était trop proche de son fond. Fait que dans ce cas ici, le photographe a décidé de mettre l'éclairage derrière le sujet. Et puis ça, c'est un parfait exemple aussi d'une lumière, d'un éclairage de cheveux. Um, ou un éclairage de, 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 plutôt de découpage. Okay, so this is a perfect example of a hair light. And here we see the actual separation between the cat and the background uh, that we have here. Again, if you have any questions, please um, post them up on the... I see, ah, we have one. 
Marc. Ah, uh, bienvenue, Marc. Welcome to the, uh, to the episode on low-key. Here we have another example here of uh, low-key lighting, and we're using two lights, in which case the two lights are opposite each other. Um, and you'll notice that the light on, on the left is just behind the subject so that we see the um, shape of the shoulder, the shape of the neck, the head, and then we have the other light, which is also just off to the right. And these two lights are more or less pointing directly at uh, the subject from both sides, because you can see here the termination, uh, the, or I should say the terminator here of the shadow is literally down the line of the face. Okay, so this is another example here for, for portrait, for portrait lighting. Whoops, for still life, you have this beautiful example here, again, is a black and white image. Um, I'm sorry, they're just black and white images that are popping up here. But you'll notice here that even though um, I mean, it's a very dark image, it could have been um, even darker, just depending on where uh, we had taken our exposure here and how much light we had to play with. Um, also, don't forget, too, that even though the heart of the flower is not necessarily... And the reason why is because the, the, the depth of field in this particular image was so small, probably because a photographer wanted to blur the background out even more and couldn't attempt uh, to get enough um, dark lighting on the back of the, uh, the background. Okay, but still, uh, if we look further down here and look at products, let's see here, do we have any products? We have another flower, another flower photo here in color. This is a this is a nice example too, and in here what we've done is we've we've shot the flower itself as a, as a as a profile uh, shot. We've lit the interior of that flower to bring to 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 really bring out the the the, the texture in the petals of the flower. Um, another good example here of a low key image. Low key images is where sixty percent of the image or more are based on black. Um, Later on, when we end up doing high key, it'll be the opposite, where high key will be. Um, but you see, I mean, look at this image here. This is a this is a beautiful, beautiful. I love these images here. When we, when we look at this, look at. I mean, you know, it 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 all depends on what kind of a a, a style of uh, image you want to uh, create. And this one here, it's very dramatic. Uh, this could be anything from a cowboy to a detective. Uh, ça dépend quelle sorte de, 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 de nuance que vous voulez donner à votre photo en tant que telle. Euh, voyez comment est-ce qu'en utilisant juste une seule lumière, comment est-ce que ça compte une histoire qui est assez, assez complète, euh, assez euh, intéressant, mais surtout, euh, ben surtout intéressant, je veux dire, c'est dramatique comme photo quand même. On ne sait pas si c'est un détective, si c'est un, cow, un cowboy, euh, si un euh, aventurier, euh, mais quand même, euh, ça donne une certaine nuance euh, à la photo de, 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 de le photographier en fonction du low-key. Fait que c'est ça. Euh, si on regarde euh, d'autres exemples ici, on a justement... T'sais, on peut faire même, même, même en, en nature morte, en fonction d'une boucane ou d'une fumée. You know, even as as a as a um, as a still life image, I mean, just look at look at the you know how we can play with this the the the, the lighting on on this little uh, smoke uh, or vapor. No, this would be smoke. Um, you know, the smoke coming from this. I can't remember what they're called. C'est des sambon. Ah, uh, But this is a beautiful example of what can be done just using smoke. And if we go back and check out, again, you know, uh, low key photography is per is beautiful for portrait, um, for for um, uh, well, you know, uh, product photography, um, you know, environmental portraits. Here's a beautiful low key environmental portrait. Where is it? View the image all alone. This is beautiful. And the light on this image here is the light from, from the lamp. La lumière qui a été utilisée ici, c'était même pas, même pas un, un éclairage euh, 
compliqué. C'est juste la lumière de la lampe qui éclaire le sujet en tant que tel. Puis vu que la, la lumière est tellement concentrée vers le bas sur le sujet, il n'y a, a aucun de détail à l'arrière-plan qui s'apparaît. So here, being that it's, you know, the light and the way that we photograph this image is, is that, you know, the light is coming from inside the, um, uh, the, the lampshade onto the subject who's just under and in that ray of light. It, it, it makes for a beautiful, beautiful image. You know, if we look uh, in the same style here, we've got product. So here we have a key that's being bent over heat, the, the heat of a candle. I mean, just look at, you know, now it's, it's not as low key as we've seen in the other images, but still this is, you know, it's one single light. It's the light coming from the candle. It is rather dark as, as far as, you know, I mean, this is probably border. I would personally, I would call this more or less borderline, um, borderline uh, low key. But still, I mean, it still works for that particular image. If we look at other styles of this, here's a perfect example of how. And Joe had a beautiful image. If you look in the, um, how would you how would you light the cowboy? Mark asks, comment est-ce que, est que j'ai uh, We'll get to that in just a moment. I'm just going to finish this one here. Uh, so if we look at this image here, this is probably the exact way that, uh, well, actually, no, that's true. Joe did his low key of the Nikon uh, using window light, but his window light didn't touch at all his background. Okay. So, but in this particular case here, if I was, if I was doing the same setup here, I would take my exposure off of whatever was the brightest lit part here on the camera, and that in itself would bring my background to a, um, a dark enough uh, exposure that my surrounding would all be uh, considered low-key. Now, Marc nous a demandé, dans les commentaires, je vais juste retrouver notre cowboy ici, c'est-à-dire que Marc se demande comment est-ce que l'éclairage pour le cowboy a été fait. C'est-à-dire que lui, qu'est-ce qu'on qu qu a fait, c'est qu'au lieu d'utiliser un, un éclairage qui est au-dessus le photographe, direct vers le sujet, c'est exactement la même façon qu'on aurait utilisé un éclairage euh, de découpage. C'est qu'on a mis l'éclairage probablement à niveau des yeux, mais opposé de l'appareil photo, c'est-à-dire face à le sujet, ok? Et puis ici où ce qu'on a repris le, le, le voyons l'exposition, le, le, ça aurait été dans cette genre de, 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 de zone ici de sa face en tant que telle. Sinon, qu'est-ce qu'il qu qu aurait pu faire aussi en utilisant un euh, pose mètre, il aurait peut-être été chercher genre euh, quand il a, il, a, il a pris la pose mètre puis le verrer vers l'éclairage, il était cherché peut-être un moins deux stops ou moins trois stops pour arriver à cet euh, éclairage de découpage en tant que tel. Fait this is how, typically, this particular image here, it's all in the positioning of the light itself. So I'm not using the light to literally or expressively light the subject. What I'm doing here is I'm using the single light as a hair light Uh, or, or what we call a lumière de découpage, and, and that's exactly what a hair light is, is a, um, a hair light is, it, it, it cuts the subject away from the background. So what we're looking for is really to get this, this, this contre jour here around his face so that it separates the, the, the subject and the brim of his hat, okay? We want to separate him, the pipe. We want, we want to see this line here so that it, it literally cuts the subject away from the black background. Okay, we don't need to know what color his hair is. We don't need to know what kind of jacket he's wearing. Here, it's, it's really the fact, and, and, and again, the focus is always on the eye. Always, always on the eye. Okay, it's a portrait. A portrait, it's, it's, it, for, it's, that's the base. Okay, I hope that answered... Uh, Mark's question on how uh, this one was lit. You, if you look here, this is another good example of a low-key image. And if you look at this low-key image here, 
here we're using we're actually using the 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 the, the, the let the LED light okay or with the or maybe it's a, it could also be a neon light but I'm pretty sure this one's a this one in particular is a, is a neon light and we're using that in the reflection of the window where she is looking outside and we don't necessarily know what kind of window it is is it a car is it a train uh it's it's typically here that she's looking out through the window and having that light on the outside of her face rather than on the inside of her face the 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 tonality here is probably the tint of the window that's reflecting it back into her face and lighting up the rest of her okay it it the the, the picture here is not necessarily where is she? What is she doing? It's just it's somebody looking out the window. Okay. And we, we do know that she's in some kind of mode of transportation because we can see uh, these bokeh um, spots of light here, uh, which I mean, either or it could be, I mean, she could be in, I'm typically, I don't think she'd be in a dance club at this per, in, in this particular image, but this is more so that she's looking out towards where she's going um, or maybe just, you know, uh, wherever her the trip might be taking her. So let's see here. What else have we got? More examples. You know, just here, you know, a, a wine glass and a wine bottle. I mean... This is using, this one in particular, again, is using two lights because we can see a source of light here as much as we can see a source of light here. There is no light anywhere on the back. And this is really, I mean, this is just, it's it's the shapes. It's, you know, again, still life, product photography, product, for photo, this, you know, product photography, still life, nature morte, uh, photography de produit, uh, la verre de vin, la, 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 la bouteille de vin, um, Et puis, on voit, ça, c'est plus une histoire de forme, de contraste. Euh, c'est pas nécessairement important de, de savoir quel vin est dans la bouteille. C'est pas l'histoire. L'histoire, c'est réellement d'avoir le, 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 le montage de ces éléments-là pour faire une un histoire assez intéressante. Here, here, we're looking at an image where, you know, it's the elements that talk to us. It doesn't matter what wine is in there. Um, we see, we can we can tell that it is a red wine because of the wine that's in the glass and the way that the glass is, is being is being lit up but in this particular in this particular point and, and you know it could be as simple as a single light on one side and a white reflector on the other side or just two lights now typically if it was a light and a reflector the light in this particular image would most likely be on our right and the reflector would be on our left because the reflection that we get here is much finer than the reflection where the light is coming from okay and this is if this is particularly two lights well it's 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 um, most likely that the light the key light which would be on the right side here is probably two stops over the fill light which is here on the uh, on the left side and, and, you know, the thing is, is also you want, don't forget, like you have a, you know, the bottle's black, um, the background is black, but you have to be able to complete the element. You have to be able to complete the shape of the bottle on both sides for us to know what we're looking at. Okay. Uh, you can try to imagine this image, if there was no secondary uh, source of light on the opposite side, how this would turn out. It would, I mean, it would turn out rather interesting. You know what? And what I'll do is I'll try to see if I can't do the same thing or in this particular style here with one light and with a reflector or a second light to show you the differences. And again, you know, feel free to use whatever you have in the house uh, to be able to do this. You don't necessarily need, uh, you know, you can do this on a white wall. Just make sure that the lighting and your exposure are all based on the light the strongest light that's on your subject. That's the only, that's the only way typically that you'll be able to light your subject, uh, and not be able to see the background. Okay. Um, in my case here, uh, the only way for me to do it would be literally to bring the lights closer to me to shut off 
my office lights, okay, in which I have four 60 watt LEDs, or I think they're they're 12 watt LEDs, which does the equivalent of 60 watts or 100 watts. So I have to diminish all of the lighting around me so that, or I have to raise these two lights so that the lighting on me is so much more bright that it's nullifying or canceling out your ambient light. And that's typ typically why we, a lot of the times we'll use flash photography or flash studio flashes or, or strobes because um, that light is in that fraction of a second, that one ten thousandth of a second or that one twenty thousandth of a second, the light is so much brighter than the light around us. Okay. Uh, C'est-à-dire que, uh, justement, um, tu n'as pas besoin d'aller chercher de la grosse équipement pour être capable de faire cette, cet exercice de cette semaine ici. C'est juste, il faut, faut être sûr que la lumière, ou ce que vous ajustez votre exposition soit réellement sur ton sujet et qu'il ne touche pas votre fond ou l'environnement en l'entour de ton sujet. Et la seule façon de faire ça en tant que tel, c'est de surexposer ton sujet en fonction de lumière et se baser sur ton, ta, ta, ta mise, de, ta, pas ta mise au point, excusez, mais ta mise, de le, ta lecture de lumière soit sur la zone qui est le plus éclaircie sur le sujet et ça, ça va rendre le, le, les alentours et le fond noir. OK, ça c'est ça c'est la plus facile façon que je pourrais vous l'expliquer en fonction que c'est en temps réel. Il euh, faut juste être sûr que j'ai assez de lumière sur le sujet ou ce que mon, euh, mon environnement soit complètement noir. OK, euh, c'est-à-dire que aussi, on, on, on voit souvent ça aussi euh, avec toutes les dernières trois semaines, là, avec toutes les la téléconférences, euh, vidéoconférences que, que, que les gens font, souvent, c'est que... Euh, Puis, tu sais, ça, c'est totalement un autre sujet, mais il mais, mais y a beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup de gens qui, qui ne comprennent pas que même pour une un, un téléconférence, euh, tu sais, il faut avoir un certain quantité de lumière parce que sinon... Tout qu ce que ça va faire, ça va ralentir. Premièrement, ça va ralentir l'enregistrement du vidéo. Euh, c'est là où ce que le vidéo va être saccadé. Parce que là, maintenant, n'oubliez pas que moins que j'ai de la lumière sur mon sujet, euh, moins que le, 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 la caméra, euh, la, la webcam euh, va pouvoir utiliser une vitesse assez, assez élevée pour que ça soit, euh, que ça défile euh, parfaitement, euh, euh, pas lisse, lisse, mais je veux dire, en anglais, on dit « smooth ». Euh, ou ce qu'il n'y a pas de, sac, de, 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 de prise saccadée. Euh, et surtout, euh, tu sais, euh, mais ça, 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 je pense que je vais faire euh, un, un, petit, un petit capsule là-dessus, euh, comment bien éclairer, pour, euh, comment avoir un, un bon, bon éclairage pour être capable d'avoir un, un, un vidéo, une téléconférence assez intéressante, euh, pour pas que ça soit trop... Euh, euh, qui a trop de distractions pour ça. Ça, c'est un autre sujet. On va laisser ça pour une autre fois. Uh, I was just saying that, you know, with all of the last three weeks of all the teleconferencing and all the video conferencing and all of the video, video conferences, uh, the biggest mistake that most people make is the fact that they never have enough light in, an, in on themselves. And, and a lot of times, what, what, and, and that in itself um, deters interest to whatever whatever kind of presentation is being presented because you know the person they're they're choppy uh and and the reason they're choppy is because well the camera's got it the, the, the webcam being the webcam that it is has to uh, compensate using slower shutter speeds but still be tr but still try to send out a video of 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second when it's using probably using something like one tenth of a second as an exposure so you know videos tend out to tend to be very blurry they tend to be very dim uh and a lot of times people think that well the best way for me is, is, is so that people and you know what yes i have a busy background i know i have a busy background but this is who i am and 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 that is that's part of my character um i could somewhere at one point put up a background to cover all of that um But then I'm just going to end up having shadows and, 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 you know, for me, my background gives a little bit more character to who I am to myself. Uh, you know, having these perfectly clean studio, uh, it, it tends to be, you know, almost like you're in an off, not an office, sorry, but in a, in a emergency room and, and, you know, it's very, uh, not surgical, but you know what I'm saying? Um, 
and the fact that I have to live with the fact that my webcam does not have an aperture on it, I, I can't go any more blurrier than that in the background. Um, but listen, uh, sorry, I, I'm going on a tangent now. I, I see that we've we've passed our, our time here. I apologize for 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 uh, going on that little tangent. It's just it's been bugging me this past week. Uh, but, uh, I will do a little capsule for that, probably to open up my, my YouTube channel as, as far as, uh, pre-recordings. Um, in the meantime, please, if you enjoyed today's episode, please like the, uh, hit like on the, uh, comments in the, uh, description of the episode. Uh, subscribe if you can, or if you enjoyed this. Um, we do this every other day. Uh, I wish you all a very, uh, fantastic Saturday. Uh, great. Have a wonderful afternoon. It's a beautiful day outside. I'm, I'm, I have my, my next, I'm going out on a bike ride with the kids in like five minutes. As soon as I finish up here, uh, just to get outside a bit. It's a beautiful day. I was out earlier. Um, Mark, thank you very much. I appreciate the, uh, the kudos on, on my background. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have gotten some interesting comments though, uh, especially that the, that sword there that my wife bought me a few years back, uh, sh- uh, directly over my head like that. Uh, <laughs> and my my whoops, I don't know if you, know, you can see my vintage uh, four by five, um, which we'll call it uh, four by five um, film camera. And yes, that is that is the scanner that I use when I'm doing my uh, large uh, film uh, scanning. Uh, je vous souhaite tous une belle samedi, une belle fin de semaine. Um, justement, n'oubliez pas, uh, l'épisode de lundi il a été remis pour 19h30. Uh, c'est la troisième sur une série de trois sur la triangle d'exposition, ça va être l'ISO. Et aussi, uh, je, vais re, je vais réexpliquer justement comment est-ce que j'utilise la triangle d'exposition en fonction uh, de les modes que j'utilise sur mes appareils photo. Euh, la plupart du temps euh, pour aussi faire comprendre aux gens que le train d'exposition c'est réellement c'est, 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 c'est simple en fonction d'un réglage on va parler du ISO euh, vous pouvez retourner sur mon, ma chaîne YouTube dans les, euh, les épisodes live et euh, les diffusions en direct et voir les deux autres que j'ai fait la première euh, des trois c'était la, sur l'ouverture et la deuxième c'était sur la vitesse qui était lundi passé Uh, so, n'oubliez pas que pour l'instant, mercredi, uh, pas mercredi, excusez, lundi, ça a été remis pour uh, 19h30 car que j'ai deux formations dans l'après-midi pour la job uh, que je dois f- suivre. Et puis, don't forget, uh, Monday, uh, my normally scheduled uh, 3.30 episode, which is the third episode of three on the exposure triangle, which will be sensitivity ISO. Will has been uh, moved back, pushed back to 7:30 uh, Monday night, for the uh, sole reason that I have two uh, trainings that I have two online trainings that I have to uh, follow uh, for for the job, uh, which is. Uh, oui, Karine, absolument, c'est ça. C'est um, uh, 19h30, uh, et puis on se ver, on, on, on se verra là. Uh, si vous avez des questions entre temps, vous avez toute la semaine pour le projet. Moi, j'ai le rattrapage à faire pour le, pour, le, 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 voyons, pour le défi de la semaine passée. Fait que je vais faire les deux en même temps. Et puis, euh, si vous avez des questions, vous pouvez toujours me rejoindre aussi sur Facebook Messenger. Euh, dans le groupe en tant que tel, si vous avez des questions, postez-les. Si vous avez des photos, à part de les défis en tant que tel que vous voulez que les gens la regardent avec vous, euh, s'il vous plaît, envoyez-les. Uh, if you have other images that are not necessarily part of the uh, weekly um, the weekly uh, challenges, please send them onto the onto the group, and we can discuss we can discuss those images also. I really have no uh, you know no problem with that either. Uh, and if you have if you want to do something a little bit more one on one, hey, listen, you know, message me in Facebook, email me. En passant, mon courriel c'est à AJ, A commercial, Andrew Tiret James.ca, si jamais vous voulez me, me rejoindre par courriel. If you would like to reach me by email, uh, don't forget that my email is aj at andrew james.ca. That's the dash in the middle, not the underscore. Um, and uh, who knows? Listen, you know, if there's anything else that you'd like me to talk about, please feel free uh, to uh, post, email, chat, however, whatever, whatever is good for you. 
Uh, I'm in the process of actually uh, finishing up my first uh, YouTube uh, channel episode. Um, and I'm also working on a couple of interviews uh, of photographers, local photographers. Um, I'm still in the process of getting that all together, but for my podcast, uh, for those who'd be interested in the podcast. I thank you all very much. I wish you all a wonderful Saturday, and we'll see you all on Monday. Thank you, and have a wonderful evening.